Hello and welcome back to another Sunday School lesson. This time we are in uh, 2 Nephi 6 through 10. And the lesson is titled, Oh How Great the Plan of Our God. So let us go ahead and proceed. So one of the interesting things about the uh, Book of Mormon as a testament to, uh, of Jesus Christ is that it really does testify of Jesus Christ. And virtually every page has a, some reference to Jesus Christ or speaks of the infinite plan of atonement or of happiness and of Christ's role in that. It's kind of the centralized theme of the Book of Mormon is Christ and how we can come to Christ and uh, be made whole uh, through Christ. And this lesson is a very good example of this in that it covers... Um, quite a bit of material about Christ and the atonement and all that stuff. Uh, so at this point, um, if you remember from the last lesson, we'll get into a little bit of the histories of it, but um, there's not that much history covered. Basically, the Nephites had, uh, Nephites people, the Nephites had separated from uh, his brethren, his brothers who were, became known as the Lamanites. And yeah, about 40 years had passed since they left Jerusalem, and uh, Nephi's brother Jacob had been ordained uh, a teacher uh, to the to the people. And pretty much verses 6 through 10 is him teaching the people and reading from uh, the book of Isaiah. And that's pretty much the lesson. So, uh, we'll, we'll just get into it. So the first aspect of the uh, lesson, or the first uh, part of the lesson is... Uh, says the Lord is merciful to his people and and will fulfill his promises and so we we have to remember that yeah there's a lot of mercy shown uh, unto us as people from uh, the Lord there there's this great line in um, the book uh, murder at the vicarage by Agatha Christie where uh, uh, a man who is very, very, a very militant Christian man is speaking loudly and bombastically about, and he, he's a judge uh, in real life about ha how he sentenced uh, a poacher and speaking militantly about justice and how justice is the most important thing and how, how great it is. And he's talking to him, a, ma a vicar who, you know, is oddly silent at, in his response, doesn't really respond immediately. And, the judge says, well, come on, what, what is up with it? Out, out with it, man. What are you thinking? And the vicar says, I, I was just thinking that when I come before God, before God, if my only defense of my life is justice, is the justice that I've shown other people, then that would be a pretty uh, poor defense of my life in that only justice would be shown to me and no mercy. And the thing about it is, we all need mercy. We all need that mercy from God in our lives, uh, in everything we do. We are not perfect. We almost continually make mistakes. And I've been by here many times. This is the first time I've noticed there's a cat up there. Ah, I like cats. Anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, we this we need those small little mercies, and we get them through the atonement of. Jesus Christ and God is very patient, very merciful with us. He's he's like, you know, the perfect parent and we are the bratty children that, you know, nobody can understand how the parent can put up with us or, you know, deal with all of our brattiness. But that's what God is. He is constantly merciful to us. You know, he, he does allow that not so, natural consequences will affect us, but he is very merciful and really, we all we need to do is follow his commandments which are not so much for him but are for us they are how we can protect ourselves and help ourselves in, in this life and in the next life is through obeying these commandments and which he, with each commandment that we get we um, there are blessings that come regardless whatever the commandment is blessings come through the use of the commandments but Interestingly, one, we don't always realize that we are getting these blessings. And two, they come in God's time, not our time. And there are times when 
getting everything we want would be very, very bad. I had a thing. It was really kind of interesting come up on uh, Twitter. Somebody posted this and said, you know, can you believe the parents in this? And it's this uh, young girl, maybe 14 years old, teenager, um, essentially talking and swearing at her parents because she's, you know, her mother saying, well, maybe you shouldn't go, maybe, you know, shouldn't go to this thing. And she's just swearing at her parents and getting all angry and saying she is going and, and very like this stuff. And I'm sitting, and, uh, you know, eventually she does go. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I could never have done that to my parents. I would have been grounded for quite a while. I would not have been allowed to go. And I can't think of any, you know, it, I, I just, how to phrase this? I, I don't, I can't think of how this would be good for the child because the child comes off as being very spoiled and just, you know, getting everything you want doesn't help you. It just, you know, doesn't give you empathy, doesn't help you understand what people are going through. It just means that, you know, mine, 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 as opposed to, hey, maybe we should share something. You know, and it, 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 it is one of those things that with God and with following his commandments, we're not always going to get 100% what we want all the time. That's just how life tends to work out. And, you know, we see examples of this in, in the scriptures of very holy, very righteous men ultimately not getting what they want, not getting, you know, good stuff. Job, I think, is a very good example of this. He was a very righteous man. But, you know, we read the book of Job. He suffered greatly in that book. After receiving so many blessings of God, he, he really suffered. And, you know, life is going to be hard. We're going to have that suffering. We're going to have these hard things that happen to us. <clears throat> but if we keep following his commandments, even and especially when they're difficult to follow the commandments, when, you know, as Job's friends suggested to him that we should curse God and die, if we do not do that, if we continue following God's commandments, we will be blessed. Maybe not immediately, maybe not even in this lifetime, but we will receive the blessings of God, just as long as we have faith and keep moving forward. It, it seems like in these Sunday school lessons... Uh, that's where I'm going when I'm talking about this, and I can only conclude that that is a very, very important lesson that I think can be taken away from this, is that no matter how hard or difficult our life may be, if we follow the commandments and have faith, we will be blessed. It seems to come up in the lessons. I seem to talk about it a lot, so it's probably important. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. <clears throat> so the second part is... Through his atonement, Jesus Christ delivered all people from physical and spiritual death. So, first off, um, I think we should define physical and spiritual death. Physical death is the easiest. It's when our bodies die. Now, spiritual death, very, it's, it's also a very simple definition. It's basically separation from God. Spiritual death is what Adam experienced when Adam and Eve I should say, both experienced it, when they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. They were separated from the presence of God. Each of us experiences this spiritual death when we're born, when we come to this earth. We experience the same spiritual death. We're separated from God. Now we can feel of his spirit and we can return to God. We'll be, and that's what it meant, means by being delivered out of spiritual death. And the only way we can be delivered out of spiritual death, because, you know, like I said, we've all sinned, is through the atonement of Christ. And pretty much all we have to do is obey the commandments and, you know, partake. You know, by obeying the commandments, by following the rules, we can partake of the atonement. We, despite all of our imperfections, we can be redeemed through Christ. And it's such a wonderful blessing that I just don't know really how to describe it. And it's just, I think Jacob actually says um, in 2 Nephi 9, 8, he's, he refers to this. Uh, and 
as uh, wisdom of God, his mercy, and grace. And that's what it really is. And we should really praise God for just this, the wisdom and his grace and just, you know, allowing us. I mean, can, can you imagine us? We're really, we're just that really awkward child. You know, the three-year-old who's crying loudly and making a mess in the middle of the supermarket while the parents are standing a little ways away. Just being really embarrassed by it. Yeah, we we're we're that little uh, bratty three year old. <laughs> that's that's how we are. And that's how <laughs> it affects us. And still, through His grace and His mercy and His wisdom, we can be redeemed from that. We don't have to remain in that state. We can become better. We can overcome spiritual death and return to be with God again. And. Christ's atonement accounts for the spiritual death, allows us to do that. And uh, through his resurrection, allow, he conquered uh, physical death as well, so that we can also be resurrected, have our bodies back. Which, you know, bodies may not be perfect, but it's really hard to enjoy a good steak without a body. It's, it's just one of those things. There's all these wonderful things that happen because of our bodies, but... You know, without them, that we would really, really miss. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I think we don't always take the time to appreciate those little details. We just kind of take them for granted. And then when they're gone, they're gone. And we'll be like, oh, I, I should have really enjoyed this. And, you know, we, we truly miss something once it's gone. And I think we would truly miss our bodies once they are gone. And I think that's why it's important, the resurrection and really the fact that we can get our bodies back, but our bodies will be made perfect. So all the ills and all the horrible stuff that happens because of mortality will be cast aside. And it's, it, it's just, you know, going back to what Jacob said, it is the wisdom of God, his mercy and grace. It's such an incredible thing. So let's move on. So... Yep, I've pretty much covered that. Oh, so one of the final final points of the lesson, and I think this is very interesting, is because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I can cheer up my heart. Now, I, we discussed this a few lessons ago with the uh, with uh, Nephi's uh, psalm, the "O oh, wretched man that I am," uh, part a uh, uh, few lessons back. But yeah, we all go through this. We all feel sad or depressed or something like this. Some of us have to struggle with that. Some of us have to really deal with these problems and these issues, and it's it can be difficult. We sometimes don't know what to do. We don't know how we can be happy. But through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can be happy. Again, no matter how hard it is to be happy, no matter how much you know, we may think, uh, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy. No, no. No matter how desperate, how hopeless our, our life may be or feel at times, we can be cheered up regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what is going on. You know, if we let God into our lives, the spirit into our lives through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we can be cheered up. Our hearts can be lifted. We can feel of this wonderful happiness and joy that God intends us to feel in our lives. And it's it, it's such an amazing thing. And I, th I think we, we've all been in kind of the pits of, of despair before. We've we felt like that, just the world just caving in on us and just feeling, we just feel like we can't cope, we can't do anything. And that's the great thing about Christ is that he can cheer up our hearts and he can show us all these wonderful things so there's just a couple of other things that I want to tackle. Um, one of them is in Second Nephi 9:45, and it speaks of um, the chains of of the of sin around us. Now, now the interesting thing about this is that my immediate thoughts of turning to this are ex are um, actually come to uh, Charles Dickens and A Christmas Carol, and it speaks. Uh, Marley was wrapped in the chains of his sins when he appeared to uh, Scrooge. 
at the beginning, and there's this wonderful visual in one of the versions of A Christmas Carol. I think it's one of the older versions. I believe it was a, mus a musical version of it, where um, uh, the Scrooge's chains are shown to him, and they're massive, massive things where several men come out carrying just this massive chain. And that these are the sins that uh, Scrooge himself has weighed his life down with. And it, it, it's such a wonderful visual. I, you know, I, I'd recommend kind of looking it up, seeing if you can find it on YouTube or something. I, I have not done that myself, but it just, it's just one of those visuals that really stuck with me in my mind. And it, it's such a great metaphor for sin and for the way that our sins weigh us down and, and carry us out. They're like... Um, addiction. Say, you know, you become addicted to cigarettes. Well, you have to have a certain amount of cigarettes per day. You can't function without it. Otherwise, it's it's just, it's really, really horrible for you. And in in that same way, sins will hold us down. We can't, they will just keep us back. We have to, you know, we, we have to somehow just carry this weight on our, our shoulders throughout our life throughout our lives with the weight of the sins and we would be stuck in that horrible horrible condition essentially forever if it weren't for the atonement of Jesus Christ and you know it's it's great to be reminded of this of just how much we owe God and Jesus Christ and really what we can do to repay them we will never be able to fully repay them but you know, the gratitude we show to them and how we help and treat others around us is a great way to start. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. And, and there. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this lesson. It 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 really is a great lesson. I'm actually liking this. It's it's kind of in the evening, maybe in the early hours of the morning. Nice, quiet little rain going on in Victorian London. It, it, it is. It's my kind of weather, personally. Not everybody may like this, but I personally enjoy this. So anyway, that is the lesson. Let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe if you like this, and I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye.